The exact prompt for this poem was to take a song, a popular song, and write a response to it as the person the song is being sung about or to. I took me and Julio down by the schoolyard and wrote a response as Julio. So here goes. This is me and Paul down by the schoolyard. My hand rode the shaft of your penis like Rosa Parks on Montgomery buses. We were only kids then. Words like masturbation and martyrdom meant little more than question marks in Sunday school. Some days I still get them confused, like young boys wrestling in dirt fields. This may be Corona, Queens, but it's still New York City, where fresh-cut grass is stitched into urban decay like skin grass. We played baseball on street corners, soccer in vacant lots, and kickball on clay caked with broken bottles. My favorite moments were our walks to the schoolyard, you whistling melodies like foreshadowing, while I pondered why exactly I felt like holding hands right then. I imagine we looked like the perfect mocha, a swirl of milk and coffee as we circled one another in summer games of tag. Without understanding how or why, I envied the sweat pouring from your brow, your chest, over your lips, because it held you closer than I ever thought I'd get to. And when yours and my curiosity sweltered to the boiling point of eggs cooked on urban streets, we manifested into something wholly new in the shadowy alley next to your house. And then your mama pajama had to come out and ruin everything. It wasn't so much her cries of faggot or the racial slurs that bothered me, but the fact that she stopped using my name altogether that day. Julio became venom to good taste, met with bile, and eternally replaced with him, that boy, and my personal favorite, When we met at the schoolyard a few days later, Rosie listened to our story with eyes like fresh stab wounds. My gaze ricocheted off of your eyes like light on mirrors, and we all listened to the familiar sound of sirens, more ominous today than ever before. When our Holy Father of Perpetual Radicalism visited me in my cell, he smiled like the veterinarian putting down his latest patient. Maybe I would have preferred my prison of iron and concrete to one of flashbulbs and infamy. <coughs> Maybe it would have been a little better if you'd done more than smile for the cameras. But you were too busy preparing for life in the spotlight to throw me back any kind of bone. Life as a martyr, victim, shining beacon for civil rights was lacking in many regards. Most notably, Paul, you still weren't there to hold my hand.